Outlaw Sports is brought to you by Molson Canadian, made from Canada, and Rocky Mountain Barbecue, Alberta barbecue cuisine at its best. Before today's segment, we want to give you a chance to win a real cool prize. All you have to do is follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Join now for your chance to win an autographed Doug Gilmer Flame jersey, the real leader of the 89 Flames Cup winning team, the club's best looking jersey. Join us on Twitter and Facebook to win. It's that easy. Grant, the Flames are in a playoff hunt. It's kind of like uh, Groundhog Day from a year ago. And really, there's nights when I have a tough time watching this hockey. I mean, yeah. God damn, it's, it's, boring. it's boring hockey. And I just have a tough time watching it. So, But don't they have to play boring hockey? Keep the they puck, have to. Keep the puck on the perimeter. Keep it on the outside. Hope you draw a penalty or two. And that Mike Camilleri, Tongay, uh, Jokin, and again, like can ignite a power play once or twice in a game. That's... That's the formula, and Kiprasov saves the day. That's the formula. Now, okay, formula be damned. Those guys you just named, shouldn't that in the real world mean goals? <laughs> shouldn't it? Yes, it should. Well, what the hell's happening? Don't know. Uh, they get their chances. Yeah. Are they, are, are they, maybe they aren't as good as we think they are. Maybe. Maybe, maybe yeah. they're not that good. Uh, maybe as veterans in their 30s, they're not as good as they used to be. Uh, they just fire the puck on the net. Uh, um, but to me, the flame style right now, that is the style. Kiprasov will save the day, and they're just going to fight this way until the end. And it'll be interesting. The trading deadline is just two and a half weeks away, and I, I truly believe that if they're not in it, we're going to see something. But um, it's beige hockey, Mike, and that's, that's the formula. See, that's the formula. How do, you, how do you argue with how they're going to play? Well, and Grant, the thing that really bothers me when I'm watching this stuff, and there are nights when I'm just sitting there playing guitar at home watching this, and... I care Alone less. <laughs> yeah, just oh, by myself, listening to the coyotes howl, uh, and that's more exciting than watching this. But I'll tell you, uh, the one thing that I just can't get my head around, the games this late in the year, and every team has them once in a while, but the effort, the effort, the, the uh, urgent, lack of urgency in some of these games. Well, and then you get a game like Chicago, where they come out and win it and play pretty decent. And then fans get excited again. Okay, we're off to the races. Well, that game against Detroit a week or so ago, a week ago, yeah. they lost 3-1. Yeah. But they were in that game, yeah. but they were playing boring hockey. Um, to me, when I you don't see effort anymore, I think the same thing. But I think what it is is a style of play. You know, Brent Sutter says they force issue, they force turnovers. They're trying to do that. But to me, it's more of a wait and see, kitty bar the door, and then wait for your chances. And so to me, that tends to look like they're not trying. The big thing for me, though, is they made a trade for Mike Camilleri at $6 million a year. They traded Rene Bork. Bork's doing a little better, I hear, in Montreal stats-wise than Mike Camilleri is here. But Mike Camilleri doesn't impress me all that, Mike, um, all that much, Mike. I, I don't know. He's got some... He, was he have one goal? He doesn't look that good to me. So I, I, I wonder if they have enough talent to score those kind of goals. To me, the, the players that really score a lot of goals in the NHL now are those fast, quick, talented young guys around the net. Flames don't have that. So they're playing the style they have to play to have any chance of success. Do I think they'll get in? No. And there's another factor, Grant, and I'm not going to use it as an excuse, but the injuries this team have, have had to fight off. Man, it's been incredible. But all teams have to face injuries throughout the year. Uh, we're going to take a short break, 15-second break. When we come back, let's take a look at some of the trade rumors before the deadline. Tired of going to redneck barbecues? Well, you better call Rocky Mountain Barbecue. Alberta barbecue cuisine at its best. Great tasting food, clean and efficient service. Check us out online or call Rocky Mountain Barbecue. Oh, the trade deadline, Grant. Right now, the, uh, the Flames trying to chase down Minnesota and the Coyotes, two teams that really recently have come across hard times. So there is that remote possibility. Now, if they're close, if they're in sniffing distance, does Feaster pull the trigger on, on a minor trade? Or if they're out of it, does he do wholesale changes? Well, I'm convinced Jay Feaster has no say in the matter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wait a sec. He has a say. Because from what I hear lately, Murray Edwards runs this team, the Flames owner. He is now the, the guy that, that, that stirs the drink for the Calgary Flames. So Jay Feaster, if you remember, he's Now, said, that's scary, because what does he know about hockey other than signing checks? He, he knows nothing about hockey. There you go. 
The only thing he knows about hockey is that he's been associated as an owner with the Flames since the mid-90s. Yeah. And every year he takes a bit more, more control. He, just like he does his business endeavors, he, he asks people, he surrounds himself with people who know something about it. So when you say, will Jay Feaster make a decision or move, whatever Murray wants, they'll do. This team is not about building for the future. This team is building about winning for now. They do not want to risk losing millions of dollars uh, to build for the future. So I don't think Murray Edwards slash Jay Feaster will make a bold move like I've always wanted them to do, trade a bona, bona fide star for the future. I still think they'll try and add a veteran type guy. So you're saying it's something like this. Hey, Murray, are we going to make a trade? <laughs> Every general manager that comes into the hockey, and, and I, I spoke to some ex-general managers recently, said, you know what, every general manager goes into the job with smart hockey knowledge, and it gets eroded away by the business side of the game. Yeah. It's not unusual, it's no different. So Jay Feaster, I think, had a plan of attack, will not trade assets away, but he's traded second round picks yeah. over and over again because the business side of what Murray Edwards and the Flames wanted, they don't want to risk losing three, four, five, ten million dollars over a year or two. So I think that, uh, so I think to answer your question, they might make a trade for a veteran player. One name that keeps popping up is Jeff Carter. Now, Jeff Carter to me, uh, when he was Philadelphia, him and Mike Richards were the center point of that dry island thing. Remember when we talked about that last year, the veterans were pissed off at some of the younger guys for their partying ways? Jeff Carter was one of those guys. Uh, injury prone, streaky player. When he's on his game, yeah, he sure can be an impressive player. But do you risk everything for a player like that and a player with that kind of a reputation? No. But why does his name keep <laughs> popping up? No. <laughs> yeah. Take a look at his stats right now. He's had a poor year in Columbus, like a lot of players in Columbus have had poor years, a yeah. bad team. Carter's no different. Uh, why was he traded out of uh, Philly? I don't know. Remember, wasn't he uh, wasn't he brought to the uh, to the camp for Team Canada before the 2010 yep. games as a center on that team? Didn't make it, but I thought he was considered. I thought he was the center the Flames should have gone after two years ago. Now I'm not so sure, but uh, I think the Flames who covet a center they don't have any centers that are any good. Yeah. They need a, a guy like Jeff Carter to be a good centerman, but I don't know if that's what the Flames should do. I wouldn't make that deal. To me, he's not the way, not the kind of player you want moving forward. But the way the Flames do things nowadays, they get these kind of players, like an Ole Jokin and kind of, kind of coming yeah, in yeah, here. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. But I say no. I, w I hope it doesn't happen. <laughs>